Hello and welcome back to The Gaming Blender, the podcast home for hypothetical games. I'm Matt and I'm here with Scott. Hello, Scott. Hello, Matthew. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm very excited for today's episode, but we will get to that in a little bit. How has your gaming week been? Um, well, I've actually been doing a bit of VR Ver. today. Ver. Um, so so I, I, I have a... Um, uh, I have a Quest 2, which is excellent, and I'm sure if anyone has one, they will agree. If anyone else has um, one, they'll have a Quest 2. What? <laughs> it's a joke. If anyone I has don't... a Quest, if, if anyone else has a Quest, they'll have a Quest 2. Uh, I'm just going to breeze past it. Oh, that is um, genuinely good. I hate you. Anyway, what well, are you doing? Well done. Well done on your joke. <laughs> um, yes, I, I've, I've been playing a game called Phasmophobia with, uh, with a couple of friends yes. of mine. Some, some you mentioned it last time, yes. Did, did I? You did bring. Oh, you right. bring up. You've stuck with one game, which is good. <laughs> I, I played it again, and uh, and it was equally terrifying. But this time, I actually played it in VR, Ooh. and it was utterly, utterly terrifying in every single way, more so than before, uh, purely because you're just fully immersed in it. And the ghost definitely killed me several times. Um, so clearly, I'm not a very good ghost hunter, as it turns out. Yes, it was um, as a career. I wouldn't advise it. No one's. No. I don't think anyone's ever gone come out of a VR game and gone. You know what? I was pretty good at fighting zombies in Resident Evil. I'm going to become a zombie hunter. Oh, that's a very good point. That's a very good point. No, I, 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 I'll try not to make a career of it. Um, I think from here on out. What about you? What have, what have you been playing? I've been. I jumped back into the world of the roguelike of Hades, which I do love Hades. But I got it is it is roguelikes are quite depressing genres because you do go. Mm. I'm getting that. I'm getting that. I died. I'm back to the start. Ugh. Yeah, Hades is slightly more forgiving because you can upgrade yourself. So each time, I think the um, the games reviewer um, called Yahtzee, um, who does zero punctuation, which I love, but he did he described it as beating your head against a wall. But each time, your head it gets slightly harder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I've, have you played Elden Ring yet? No. So uh, Elden Ring is. It's it's a bit more forgiving because you. Is it? I've heard mixture of things. Some people say it's forgiving. Some people say it's harder. I, I can't gauge it. So so I, so I mean I'm not a Dark Souls player as we've discussed before, mm. um, and have never played any of the Dark Souls previously. But it's it's unforgiving and the combat's very hard. But you don't lose an awful amount when you die, and you don't like go back too far. Oh, okay. So it's more forgiving in that sense, in terms of it's quick more back in that in there. sense, yeah. And all you have to do is basically go back to where you died. I think it's similar to like Dark Souls. And all you do is you just you don't lose any levels. I don't think you just and you you have to regain the experience that you were building up to the next level. Yes, which is not which is not too well. You do that. You do do that in Dark Dark Souls as well. Oh right, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah it's it's not it's not. I, I don't find that too much of a a drama to be honest. Yeah. Well, I th- I think that's I, I think they're very well engineered those games in terms of you can be rubbish actually and play through those games. It just takes you longer. Um, yes, it, yes, it, it, can, yeah. it can be done, um, but no, that was good. I also played a little bit. Of T- it takes two with my partner, which is incredible. And oh yes, I need to get yeah, that. Actually. It is, it is exceptional. I can recommend it. But we have rattled on for three minutes. I'm, I'm too excited to stop. As you'll know, if you're a returning listener, we, we do hypothetical podcasts. So what, what we do is we have a randomised number generator, which, which. Oh, I say randomized number generator. It's Scott. Scott is the randomized yes. number generator. Yes. And as he selects, uh, he select picks from a load of numbers, which defines what genre, what game mechanics, and what narrative. And we shove it all together and recreate a new game. Now, magical, magical moment. We have had a suggestion from a listener come in who would like to, us to design a game based on parameters that they have set. You can also do this if you tweet. You can send us in a tweet at the at Gaming Blend Pod. And we will do this for you as well. But this is the first user recommended um, blend. What do you? Do, do, you know, do, do you know what this means? This this actually means there is a human being somewhere in the world who actually cares what we think. Yeah, that is true. And I'd like to thank my mum for that. And uh, mm. Mm, I, well, I mean, it's a milestone. Let's be honest. Mi- um, I, if, you know, there's there's no other way to put it. It's it is first, a glorious it's milestone. It's the first cobble on the path to victory. We having a cobbled street to victory? <laughs> can we, can we not have something cobbled. that's a little bit more comfortable? It's a cobbled street to victory. <laughs> I mean, like a, a cobbled street. That's a, have you driven down a cobbled street? It's, <laughs> it's ruinous for the for the old back. Anyway, we're going off topic. So, what I've got is I have this tweet here, and I've made Scott not go on to our Twitter for the last week because I want him to. I didn't want anyone to. I didn't want him to look at it. I wanted to be completely avoided of it. So I'm going to read this out to you fresh, Scott. Okay. Now, what I think is I've read this. I think it, it lends itself more to the narrative side, and it give, okay. does give us a genre 
but I want to throw a couple of mechanics into this to spice it up. So I'm just going to read okay. out the suggestion. This suggestion comes from Boondi Al Boondi. That's a great name. Uh, it is a great name. I love it. Um, who sent this tweet in. He said, narrative, something involving a librarian and a professional wrestler. Genre. <laughs> yes, that, 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 you go, I, I love it already. Genre. The game takes place inside of a fictional video game, something along the likes of Wreck-It Ralph or, Stan, or the Stanley Par- Parable. And mechanics, he said, dealer's choice. Uh, he or she, I should say. This is I, I could not. <laughs> Bundi al Bundi could be male or female. We should leave that out. But right, okay. I think so. Reading this, I think it's possibly a little bit loose on the genre side. So I'm going to limit the genre myself. I'm going to say that this is a fighting game. Whether that be okay. rest, I think naturally wrestling is the one it lends itself to, or could be one on one. But I think more. Let's say it's a wrestling game. Okay. You've got the narrative, and I think what we're going to do is we're going to move the narrative to also include that game within a game element. Yes. And I think that game within a game should also, we should also think about including that somehow. So yes. what we're essentially coming up with is a fighting game that has a game within a game element and the narrative of a librarian and a professional wrestler. So what I will say very quickly is I think we should be even more liberal. And if you, if, if you take the example of Wreck-It Ralph, I'm not saying we recreate Wreck-It Ralph because that's an excellent film. Uh, and also a film, not a video game, very critically, um, is that... That is true. Those are different. Is that, <laughs> is that, is that we don't... If, if, we, if we make it a fighting game, then we limit ourselves with the sort of games we could put these characters into. Because you could go down the route of the, um, the type of game changes as the story goes on. Okay, well, I have, a, I, have a, I, mean? I have an idea for this, but do you want to pick some mechanics first and then we can start weaving right, everything together? Because I think what we got at the moment is quite freeform, but I think let's throw some mechanics in to really, really mess with everything. So for, if you're new here, we've got 28 potential mechanics Scott can pick from. He will pick two random numbers between 1 and 28, and these mechanics we will work into the, into the game. So, Scott, what are you going to go through? Mm, why me the numbers again? I've forgotten. Well... <laughs> one to twenty-eight. So there's Thank one. You, sorry. There's two. There's three. There's four. Yes, no, 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 there's no, 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 no. I couldn't remember the, the, the bookend. Oh, you should wait till you get to six. Uh, uh well, you know, counting's never been my strong suit. Um, I'm going to go for number sixteen and number seventeen. Oh, good God! Have I done a bad thing? You've done a bad thing. One of them you picked before. One of which is a rhythm game, which I actually think can work itself into a fight. No, no, game. We, we can, we can, we can do that. Yeah, we can we do can... that. Do you know what the second one is? Oh, Gimmick controller. What the hell does that mean? Rock band guitar hero, as an example, DJ hero, that sort of stuff, where you had a controller specifically designed for that game. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Okay, so hang on. So we got. Um, I'm trying to spell how to spell rhythm. There we go. Rhythm. I'm a bit thick. Rhythm, um, rhythm and essentially rock band. Okay. Um, <laughs> rhythm and rock band it doesn't have to be. It just has to be some sort of gimmick control. For example, actually, a better a better example, less of a gimmick really, is driving games. You can have the free. You can have the full on wheel, for example. I'm assuming our game will come with the wheel. Yeah. It's not going to be this 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 product sold separately. No, no, but uh, yes, it will come with the wheel. This is not an important thing right now. <laughs> I just want to get the parameters set. I don't. I don't want people to have to buy like a forty-five quid wheel. Um, <laughs> Can't right, put a price okay. on the wheel. We've actually set ourselves a bit of a difficult one here. I know. The moment I saw that, like I, I saw you go rhythm, and I thought, ooh, and I saw you go wheel, and I went, ooh. Oh no. Um, right. Okay. So I think, I think the way that the way that we skin this is so rhythm games and rock bandy type games are in video arcades very similar to Wreck-It Ralph Um, so we could go down that route but obviously change bits and pieces so it's obviously not basically Wreck-It Ralph Um, but then that wouldn't be very original Um, I have have an idea I have an idea right I'm going to go full cheese, by the way, this one. As much as our narratives in the past have made sense and we've tried to have emotional connections to anything, we're not. We're, I'm going to go full cheesy, hilarious. This is going to be a comedy game, okay? Go on. Wrestler in love with a librarian. 
So he's in love with the, his local librarian and he turns up all like seven foot of him massive with a really small bunch of flowers going in Sandra in or something like that. Is this, is this within his game? Yes. This is no, no, no. This is in real life. Uh, this is right. Okay. Real life. So what then happens is the library in a push to get um, youngsters into reading and into books have bought a one of those do you remember when you we were younger and we had bbc bite size and stuff and spark notes and stuff like that yes what they've bought is they've bought an interactive computer with the spark notes of all of the major like gcse texts or something like that and it's one of those unfortunately through some magical devious ways it's come to life and turned evil and it's sucked in the librarian at which point the the wrestler also gets sucked in and the wrestler ends up fighting all of the various um serious like all the various characters within those books of like the spark notes history so he'll go through fighting i don't know through um proctor in, in arthur miller's uh in arthur miller's play the crucible and stuff he'll end up fighting against all these characters real fight richard the third and stuff like that okay uh, so hang on so 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 we're weaponizing spark notes is that what yeah we're doing? that's it we're weaponizing Spark, and it's become an evil game it's sucked in the library and the wrestler has to go in to save her or him that we could reverse it i think it'd be more funny to reverse it do you think so and what have a well how about we reverse it and have the wrestler saved by the librarian yeah and reverse the love as well reverse the love so the, li- so the librarian's in love with the wrestler reverse the love wrestler i think i think in. i think that was the the title of my third studio album <laughs> utterly dreadful in every way um but yeah so if we if okay we reverse everything so wrestler gets sucked in librarian in love with wrestler librarian goes in as well to rescue wrestler right because i think that works okay so essentially what she'd done is she'd i'll be saying she he which way around are we doing just so i get my pronouns right for this uh we'll go uh, I think it would be funny why, do, why don't we go the other way why don't we get why don't we go the non stereotypical way we'll go female wrestler and male librarian, why not? Okay, and we could be... I think he's got to be quite a, a dweeby librarian because that's where the comedy would come from, just like he, he, he's not used to this and that's how he trains himself up. Yeah, exactly. Um, are we, oh, so hang on. So when, when, when they get sucked in, or when he gets sucked in, are we saying that Sparknotes basically almost becomes like a... When you're in it, it's like a video game. Yes, yes, and that's where the video game right. within a video game element is and you're inside this... I mean, it's a, it's a bit Wreck-It ralph You're essentially inside an arcade machine that has various stages where you will, and you have to fight. Have you ever played, I don't really play one-on-one fighting games, but have you ever really, have you ever played... Um, like st- Tekken and all that sort of stuff. Well, yeah, yeah. Those, the story, the campaign levels of those, where you know where you'll work your way from fight to fight to fight. Yeah. And each time you fight in this game, you go to a different, like, a GCSE book. So I don't know, we did Richard the Third. I remember when we were a bit younglings at school. I mean, Arthur Miller's Crucible was another one I remember. Can you think of any others? Uh, well, you got like the Iliad and the Odyssey, and oh, I know uh, how you could start. You could start by fighting Piggy from um, from um, what, what's oh, what's the name of the book? Lord of the Lord Flies. of the Flies. You fight Piggy, <laughs> but but Piggy's just some boy that gets crushed by a rock. I know, but is that spoilers? why are we fighting um, Piggy? But it's, it's level one. <laughs> okay, so level one. We I don't th- I don't think we have to do every level. We'll, no, we'll no, no, days, no, but no. just as an example, no. and but, but but how does that link into how do we put rhythm and gimmick in there right i'm trying are you are you are you completely down the road that we have to do this fighting thing because if you're willing to to bend it we can make it so there is also fighting in there but that you say the different levels are different genres of game you see what i mean yes i know what you mean again that's wreck it ralph-esque isn't it where he goes to the different sort of um arcade machines um, yeah, he doesn't go to too many though. Yeah, 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 well, no, 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 yeah. No, no, you, you know what I mean. But in, but how does that help the motion controller? What well, I said, the, uh, motion, the, the controller. So that's an interesting one. I mean, I had the um, idea that the motion controller was maybe a book that you had to open at the right page. It was like, do you remember those? Oh, do you remember adventure books? Yes. Do you remember with the venture books where you used to have to like you'd read it and it'd go, do you go down the path or do you go down the thing? Yes. And you change page. Imagine that, but you like that takes you to a different level if you go like the wrong way. And what? And, and that's the is that the gimmick? Well, I, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, uh, 
I'm thinking. I'm just throwing things at a wall and seeing. No, 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 stick no, sorry. no, no. Sorry, I was, I was trying to work out if you were doing the gimmick or if you were. That, that was, was the gimmick. Trip. I was just imagining if you had a book, like you, the player, had a book in the real world where you were going through and you were just you were being like sent to different levels depending on which page you were on. So how do you do that in a way that? So could you do it that you had like a when you bought the game, you also downloaded the app on an app on your phone, and then you. Did did it through there because then that's still a gimmick that you don't have to pay for. Okay, true. That was uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I think could do it that I think way. I'll allow an app. I actually you'll think... allow an app because then because then you know everyone's got a phone. So then okay, maybe yeah, you can do it that way, and you can do like almost like a a. Um, You're very keen on people you know, not paying for this. I I I you know I'm squaring everyone away here with with not having to pay forty five pounds extra for a bloody wheel or something. Um, Enough with the wheel. <laughs> okay, well a pedal then or whatever, whatever it is. Um, the rhythm thing can you don't actually need any extras for that. You can do a rhythm thing. We've done a rhythm thing before. Um, you just do that. Well, I mean, how do we do that? What are your ideas on the rhythm bit? I think the rhythm bit is just sort of a fighting style. I mean, you can have a rhythm bit without it being maybe linked to the plot, and it's maybe just like a combo thing. Like you just have to get the rhythm. I'm. I, I'm trying to think of a way to intrinsically link it to the narrative. Like, are are there specific rhythms played in specific worlds? But that doesn't, doesn't really link to the book theme, so that's quite tricky. Mm. Unless unless it's the audio. What you could have is maybe the machine has really irritating, not, not irritating, but it has like this really cheesy song playing in the background, and as you fight through the cheesy rhythm, but like, and the rhythm sort of the rhythm of that beat is sort of linked maybe to the evilness of the machine. And I say that, that sounds awful, but in the way that it, it's, it starts off with one track and then when it turns evil, the track changes. And then as you're fighting through your, the various levels, you, your, that track keeps changing depending on how close you get to like the center of the machine. And you have to okay. keep matching the rhythm. Like if you hit outside of the... Like because, it's, because you're a character within that game within that machine, you have to match its rhythm in order to, order to match its programming. So you're saying when you're doing the fighting, you have to fight in rhythm with the music? Yes, in time. God, that's going to be difficult. Oh, no, there's plenty of games that do, do stuff like that. I'm just trying to think if I could do that. Oh, you can't do it, no. I've got terrible... No, no, you famously are only good with a wheel. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so... Is, is, this, is this like... Are we making this, like, literally... Mario's going to get Princess Peach in that this professional wrestler has been you know kidnapped and stored in Bowser's castle I suppose so you yeah, yeah. Fight through different levels to get to the professional wrestler yeah um is are we going to sell it on the professional wrestler comes in and the professional wrestler doesn't know how to play video games and so completely piles in librarian bit dweeby can play video games comes in saves the professional wrestler because he can play video games yes okay. and also because he understands te- he understands the technology more so so he just gets like rhythm game makes sense like you'll maybe in his first fight you lose and then in a cutscene he goes oh it's a rhythm game oh and then then you sort of have training levels where you're sort of hitting it and, and it gives you good... right okay and it's sort of hmm. he understands the mechanics better whereas the wrestler tries to fight people off and fails because she's doesn't know exactly what the video games are Okay, so we're going with, um, we're going with, uh, you know, basic. The, the the basic underpinnings is is fighting, with rhythm based on, uh, basically where you are in the game, or yeah. how far through the game you are, and uh, yeah, you have an the uh, gimmick have a is evolving soundtrack. Yes. So the gimmick yeah, is still stumbling block. I still think that you, so I, I still think we can do a we can do a thing with an app on a phone which can guide your essentially put you down different paths on your adventure as it were. Well maybe that's maybe what we do then is we have something where you have it on the app with it you kind of almost you select which way you're going because it gives you like you'll have quotes pop up on your phone dependent on different books and you kind of just if you you have to kind of recognize the quote to know where you're going next 
So if you click one right. quote and then you can end up, oh, that was Lord of the Flies. Oh, that was Richard III. Oh, that Matt only clearly knows two books. Um, yes, yeah. But Richard III or Lord of the Flies. I'm trying to work out why that has to be on a on an app. Well, because you said it had to be a gimmick, didn't it? Yeah, not... not I, not because I'm saying it's got to be on a phone. We have to make justify it being on the phone. Because why does it? Why can what's being done on the phone not be done on the screen in front of you? That's the yeah. key. Because I accidentally chose the gimmick. Yes, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> You're not helping. Um, I think we need to we need to blacklist that number, whatever number it was. I think seventeen. Uh, <laughs> Stop black. You blacklist mobile games in the last one. I know. I've, I've forgotten what number that was. Oh, for God's sake. Um, um, you can't. I, I'm starting to think maybe we should move away from an app because I think the, the thing is with an app because it's got the screen. Anything you can do on the app, in theory, you could do on the screen in front of you. No, so I, I meant it as sort of like a, um, you know, you you. It's almost like a, almost like a not like a mini game, but like a, uh, like a, almost like a, a, a text adventure bit between levels as it were which then changes what level you then go to but why can't that, why can that not be done on the screen in front of you oh i don't know <laughs> uh well i mean if, if we do it on the screen in front of you does that make it still a does it fit into our gimmick mechanic <laughs> i well no no it, no it doesn't no <laughs> i'm no. Not, not allowing that okay then I, i'm out of ideas for that particular mechanic <laughs> Do you have any ideas? I'm think. I'm just trying to think. Oh, it's very, very hard. This one. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about maybe you do the app so separate because we're doing the game within a game idea, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Is there something we can do? Like, is the phone connected to the real world while you're while you're playing? Like, whatever's on the app. So, could you control maybe? Is there a way you could do so? I don't know, like level select or something like that from the upper echelon. So it would make it really feel like you were in a video game because you would, I don't know, you someone else would come along and change what game you're playing or start playing on the console themselves. I don't know. It's very, very difficult. So also in terms of fighting games, has there been... I mean, I'm, I'm half tempted to go back to the book idea. Well, know. what was the book idea? Well, the Spark Notes, where you have the adventure book, and depending on which way you turn it, that's what the level you go to. But I feel like that—that's a bit—that's a bit, for want of a better word, gimmicky. We can always do that. I don't see any reason why why that wouldn't work. Do you think so? I, I feel like, yeah, I feel, I feel like maybe if you were playing the adventure game, and you were reading the book along, and it was literally a written book, a written adventure game book. Oh, that would be meta. Sorry, it's just dawned on me. What you could do is that book you're reading, and this is me sort of like using, we can use video games to encourage children to read. That book can literally be the book of what is going on screen. Okay. So in other words, that is the plot. So it becomes very meta with you're reading the plot that's happening on screen as your guy's acting it out. And it's set as an adventure book style. So you could read along and if you go to the right page, you progress to the next level or you could go back or you could go to a different level. It's not necessarily a straightforward book. It is one of these adventure game books. But it's incredibly okay. meta because also your guy on screen is aware. You, your guy on screen could be, your librarian could be acting out going, my God, I'm sure there's an adventure book that this is exactly the same as somewhere. What's going on? Okay. So no, no, you as a, yeah, so it's work. like game within a game within a game because you... Your play, your guy has been sucked inside a game, which he is playing. But at the same time, the person who is playing your game is also playing a game with a book, which is developing the other game. So many, many games. It's like Inception. It's like Inception, but with games. Gameception. I'm not, I'm not intelligent enough to understand this. <laughs> I do, I do understand you do, it. You do I'm understand it. Not well, if you listen enough. to the Game Blender podcast and you understand this, Scott lives at number four, correct? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I yes, but clearly not a very intelligent man. Um, no, I, I I do understand what you're saying. That's a, that's a lot of a lot of um, a lot of levels. It's a, literally and figuratively. It's a lot of levels, but you can repeat some. So what you could do is you could have if you had a core set of characters and stuff, you could jump around, and depending on which way you went, you could you might be forced to refight certain people because okay. that and because what what you had done in the book had accidentally given them an upgrade so you went back to piggy and this time piggy had the conch 
Right. And and and, and if you don't get that reference, um, <laughs> you might have to read, read Lord, read Lord, Lord the, the Flies, Flies and then come you... back and listen to the last five minutes of this podcast. Yes. Um, okay. Okay. So, okay. Sorry. Stripping back a bit. When we go to, when we're doing the fighting, okay, is the, uh, uh, do you want it to be like Tekken style? Do you want it to be like a one-on-one yeah, let's do, Dark let's Souls do, type thing? No, let's or? do um, Tekken style. I like the idea of it because also, I think it's easier to track a Tekken style for rhythm game, like dum dum dum. When they're just side by side, it sort of simplifies it. Okay. Do we do we go? Do we make it like really violent, like Mortal Kombat? Or I don't know. I'm d- because we could do because that would be really surprising. Can you imagine like I don't know, like pulling Piggy's head off or something? Like, that would be that would be very violent. It would be very um, violent. I feel like there's a joke in there. And very surprising. I feel like we, we won't. We maybe we don't make it really violent, but there we could do like jokes. Like he could, the librarian could get really close to doing a Mortal Kombat esque finisher, and they go, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I, I really am." Oh well, I mean, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, or you could just do, go down the. We do it really violent, and then he's incredibly surprised at how violent this game is. Maybe I mean, also, it is. It, it is an evil spark. Maybe notes. the violence reflects the text it's based on. So, for example, Lord of the Flies, at the start, you'd think it wasn't very savage. And then it has the most savage execution. You go, oh, God, I forgot how horrible this game. And then, and then you play a slightly younger uh, orientated book, and that's much more sort of floaty and more Tekken style. And then, uh, I don't know, something like Richard III would be quite graphic as well. So it depends what, um, genre, what type of book you're playing, like how bad that book oh, is. Okay, I see. No, no, I see. So you make it thematic. Yeah. Okay, no, so I, you could go into a book, I'm trying to think, um, say you went into like Stephen King's It and you had to fight Pennywise. You'd be like, oh, no. Oh, no, yeah, this no, is that, so that, horrible. That would, be quite, that would be quite terrifying. Yeah. Um, okay, no, no, and that, no, that, that makes sense. Are we saying that, so obviously the librarian becomes essentially an avatar of himself in his sort of boring beige clothes. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, yeah. So he'd be- and then should we, should we say that throughout it, like he, he starts looking like, you know, he starts like getting like new, like clothes and stuff. And like, by the end, he looks like this, this hero, or is he going to stay like this dweeby librarian throughout? I feel like you could, you could just get him different outfits, but we play into the joke, like as in, so the, the the things that you can get him are more versions of the dweeby outfit. Like you could swap out his shirt for like a tweed jacket and you can get him new types of glasses. Like, so we're really playing on that. So it's like, uh, I don't, it's, it's the, it's the button up shirt of doom. I see. Right. Okay. So, so he always looks like a librarian, but his stats get better due to various sort of mythical, shirt artifacts that he then picks up and <laughs> well, what we also wears. we could do it is in we could like um have it so although there do we be at items by the end they look incredible like he's got the glasses of fire on and his jacket is is made of pure ice or something like that and it's just he's, okay. he's essentially wearing a three-piece suit but it looks incredible i like it no i i, I think it's it sounds very weird but i like it and and we're encouraging young people to read, which is the main thing. That isn't is it? always the main thing, you know. That there's there's a silver lining to all these all all these things, yeah. and the the silver lining is kids will read. I'm dyslexic, so it's a silver lion. He is he is very dyslexic, <laughs> um, but I'm stupid, so you know we all have dyslexic our... and stupid fighting crime since 1994. Hmm. Not not successfully. No, um, I think so. Anywho, I, I think that's uh, <laughs> pretty good. So let's just do a quick run through of what we got. Um, so we have got a fighting rhythm game with a gimmicky, um, a, gim- a gimmicky controller. Uh, it really and- didn't help us out with those choices, did I? <laughs> you really didn't. You made it so much more uh, difficult. No. And the idea is, it's a librarian. Well, it's a it, it's an evil spark notes esque video game machine in a library which sucks in a wrestler and the love of her life the librarian jumps in after her to save her and as he goes in he starts fighting various book characters in this rhythm game now to be the sort of game within a game the gimmicky controller is going to be an adventure book which you read and open as you're reading the as you're playing the game and depending on which pages you go to in the adventure book it depends on which uh, levels you go to and you could end up going all the way back to start depending on which versions you pick so you are reading the story at the same time and also your character is aware of this and aware of how meta this is and you're fighting the whole time in Tekken style and the fights reflect the the violence level of the the fights reflect 
the type of book you're in. And you've always, and by the end of it, you'll also have an incredibly upgraded three piece suit. So mm. that's where we are. Are you going to name it, Scott? Oh, um, do you know what? I think I've named enough. I think it's your turn to name one. Oh. Ha ha. <laughs> what we're going to do it's is we're turn. going to name it. And if, if Boondi Al Boondi, if you, if you, if you don't like the name, uh, we will let you name it again. And we will say that on the next yes. episode, but we'll try yes. and come up with a name now. I like maybe reading between the lines. Okay, um, no, that's not that, that, well, it, just it, between the lines. Well, no, no, he's got to have reading in it. I think it's still got to be slightly like tongue in cheek. So, uh, um, uh, ready for battle. <laughs> Spark, Spark notes rampage. <laughs> it's all that evil spark. Uh, um, oh, spark note scrap. Spark note scrap. <laughs> yeah, spark... I feel like I feel like we're I feel like we're defacing spark notes. Oh, poor, yeah, got so many, so many people through <laughs> the spark note scrap. I, I think I, I, yeah, we can, we can do the spark note scrap. I think spark note scrap. This is where Boondi Al has no idea what spark notes is and just thinks we just defaced yeah, his game. Like... I'm like guys, what spark notes? Oh, oh well. we have to change it. <laughs> <laughs> Never. So <laughs> no. that is where we've arrived with the spark notes scrap available on all devices, or you can just read the adventure book. It seems. Um, yes. Well, we hope you enjoyed that, and if you do want to send us your suggestions for a game, which uh, we'd love you to do, we will do the same again, and also give you the chance to name it. And I don't know if we get enough of them, we might have a competition to see who had the best game, even though we make all of them. So I suppose yeah. that's and. I will. I will promise next time when someone um, uh, when, when when someone sends in an idea that I will try not and ruin screw it. the nut a bit more and not ruin it with rhythm and gimmick. Well, um, we got there, and I'm very proud of us for getting there. So yes, if you have your own suggestions, contact us at the gaming at the gaming blender. I can't say. It, I can't speak. Up. At the gaming blender. Gaming blender. <laughs> gaming blender. What's Glinda got to do with it? Contact us at the Gaming Blender Pod on Twitter, and we will turn it into a game for you. In the meantime, thank you so, so, so much for listening. And I have been Matt. And I have been Scott. And keep blending. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.